So you may have clicked on this video and thought, crap, <laughs> this looks like a dog stinner. Why did I even do that? However, you, you would be right. And um, yeah, it is a dog stinner, isn't it? It does look rubbish. Still, my breadboard work leaves a lot to, to be desired, but the actual result is pretty good. It works. So this is my binary clock, binary clock. Uh, essentially, it's each number in the, in the time is coded into binary. 4-bit binary, although um, you know some of these don't require all of the LEDs. For example, uh, these are the seconds at the top here. These are the minutes. Sorry, these are yeah seconds, minutes, and hours at the bottom. And then in the middle we've got our timing stuff. So this is our oscillator, and we also have a um, this is a, a 4073, which is a triple input AND gate, and that is doing some clever stuff. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. It's not really that clever, but still, this is this is it going along. So you'll see this one's changing every second. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, flip over. So you'll notice this one changed when that did that. So it's about to do it again. Eight, nine, flip over. So we've got three on this row now. So that's 30, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9.40. So you'll see that's those are the seconds up here. I mean, it's pretty difficult to see with all the terrible like hair wiring all over the place. Look, I just don't have good technique for this. You'll just have to believe me that it's working correctly. So these, these run off the one hertz clock pulse, which is down here using a 4060 and a 4027. Uh, and then all of that goes through this is connected to the 4073. So the big seconds can only go up to five. We can't get them going any higher than that because that would break the rules of the time. So we have the, um, the four and the two connected to the 4073. And when the four and the two appear on here, so we've currently got one, two, four, and then we're just waiting for the two to show up. So once this goes over the 10 second mark again, We'll see it in a second. That chip is going to reset. There we go. So it turns itself off. So it's reset that, and then that carry out signal from that reset. So we're using the high on the reset. So these triple input AND gates come from the two and the four. They're duplicated, and then that triggers an output on the uh, the AND gate here, which resets this chip but also sends a trigger across to the next chip down here. And this is our minutes section. So this is small minutes, bigger minutes. So this is the, uh, the small digit and the larger digit. And so we're currently reading nine minutes on that one. So it's one, two, four, eight. So that's nine. And then we're going to be adding on another one over here once it ticks over. So each one of these four, five, 10 ICs, um, I'll put a little, picture of one here, it has a carry out and a carry in signal that can, the, the carry out is the output and the carry in, there we go, we just jumped over there. The carry in is an enable line to, um, to mean that if it gets a, a clock pulse, it will be enabled when that carry in is uh, high. So we come down here and we've got almost exactly the same setup as the seconds. You'd imagine it would be exactly the same. You can go to 59 minutes and 59 seconds. So it's exactly the same as the one up here. And then we have the hours down here. Now this is sort of easy, I guess, because we're using a 24 hour clock. So it can go from anywhere from zero to 24. So this starts at zero and it counts up. And when it gets to uh, 24, uh, we do something very, very similar to what we've done before. We're just using the same trigger over here. This is our triple input AND gate to reset the, uh, the IC. That's essentially it. That's all we need to do. So this one will count up to 10, at which point it jumps over. That puts a one in over here. That makes it 10 o'clock in the morning. So all the while this is counting up to nine, it's still nine in the morning counts up to 10, 10 in the morning, 11, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that's eight in the evening. 
uh, 21, 22, 23, 24. So when we get 2 and 4, both signalled on here, we're using our AND gate, remember, we then reset that chip, those chips. So it's really, really simple. Um, all I need to do now is I've got my, uh, my switches and my diodes, and I need to, I mean, I have a switch here that uh, resets part of my circuit, but because I'm actually using the reset uh, lines with my um, AND gate, then it's not actually really gonna do much help, not much helpful stuff. So I need to put some diodes in on those, uh, on the universal switching line so that we don't, um, when we're doing resets, we're not connecting all those reset lines together. So when we're doing the automatic resets from our, um, from our AND gate, I'm rambling quite a lot, aren't I? I apologize. Um, so I've got some switches so we can also trigger the, um, the clock source. So at the moment it's completely automatic. There's no way of setting the time. There's only a way of counting up. So it's a timer now. It's just counting up or a stopwatch essentially. So I'm gonna be adding these in and then uh, the next time you see this video, hopefully it will be fully complete and we'll be ready to start um, designing this board up in Eagle. And then um, we'll be able to make it into a little kit, I think. I also just wanted to ask your opinion about something. So at the moment I'm using these little, um, what are these, three, five mil LEDs? Probably three mil LEDs. But I picked up some of these um, 10 mil LEDs, big, big old white 10 mil LEDs. And I wanted to know what you thought of them. Are they better? I mean, they're a, they're a bigger indicator, obviously. Let's zoom in on one so you can actually have a look at it going around. So it's a much bigger, brighter indicator, but it takes up a lot of room, doesn't it? So I can just, let's take them all out and then we'll just put all of these in. It takes up a lot of room. I was thinking of when I do the kit, including them in the kit. And that way, I mean, they won't all fit in this blooming breadboard like this, will they? <laughs> they look really silly. They're like bug eyes. Um, yeah, I thought about including them in the kit just because they're nice and large. And it would mean that um, the PCB would probably get larger. But you may not need to create an enclosure for it if it had big, big old LEDs that, um, that looked pretty. I think we might have to move a resistor to fit all these in. Jeez, yeah, we're going to. There we go, that's, um, let's move some of these resistor legs out. Frustrating, isn't it, that I'm like really shit, not very good at breadboard stuff. <laughs> right, there we go. Last one to go in. And that should be all of them lighting up now. So it's that versus those little ones. Now those little ones are brilliant for prototyping here, but I, I do get that these, uh, the nice large ones look good. I don't even know if it's in focus, I can't tell. Yeah, they look nice from further out and it actually looks like less of a waste of breadboard space, but it, um, it is complete. So um, yeah, no, it's not complete, obviously. I've got the other little things to do but um, it works in principle, which I'm happy with. The only thing now that isn't an issue really is uh, setting the time. I could just say, look guys, uh, the only time that you can turn this thing on is at 12 o'clock at night, bang on, and then it will start at zero, but I'm not gonna do that. I wanna be able to make it so you can set the time. All right, I'll see you next time.